Hey guys, it's Sebastian, and today I'm going to show you how to create and manage a WebEx event. What's the difference between a WebEx event and a WebEx meeting? Well, it's really, really actually quite complicated. Um, a WebEx event has a lot more features, a lot more different abilities that a WebEx meeting just doesn't have. Um, you can have panelists, presenters, you can share different kinds of content, um, you can have attendees register for the event in advance, you can send out email reminders. There is so much you can do in a WebEx event that you just can't do in a meeting. So for those of you looking to do some sort of webinar or some sort of uh, larger uh, corporate video presentation, this WebEx event feature is for you. So I'm gonna take you through everything um, that will help you get this event started. So let's jump into it now. The first thing that you're gonna to need to do is have your WebEx account logged into your web browser. They, uh, you can't really do this from a software application. They really want you to log into the WebEx site and figure out the details there. They don't make it easy either to find uh, the WebEx event. If anyone from WebEx is listening, it would be really, really helpful to have a better way to access your WebEx events other than a tiny little link in the bottom corner. I'll show you what I mean. So you're logged into your WebEx site, you're logged into your WebEx account. You can see I'm all logged in here. You can see your personal room, all that stuff. Um, you'll see it's not in any of these kind of main menu features, not there. It's in this tiny little gray writing at the bottom left of the screen, um, and we'll select that. And then the event screen kind of opens up for you, um, and it gives you a whole bunch more options which are kind of hidden. So yeah, if WebEx is listening, I think you should put that in your main menu as a main option. The next thing um, that I'll show you about a WebEx event is to how, how to actually schedule one from the, from the beginning here. So, all you have to do is go to schedule an event. Really, really simple. It's in this kind of uh, second menu down here. And then you have a whole bunch of options. And I'm gonna kind of walk you through step-by-step step which, what these options do, um, but lots of them require a lot of setup. So I'm not gonna go and set up an entire event because that would be, we'd be here for a while. Um, but what I'm going to show you is the key features that really matter when you send out those registration links to your attendees. So the first thing is the event type. That's, I couldn't tell you what that means. It's an online event. Of course, it's an online event. It's a webinar. I don't know what other uh, event type it could be. Um, so we're going to just keep that as an online event. Then you can choose the name of it. We're going to test. We're going to do skycomp.ca slash learn because we're putting in some embedded advertising in there. If you don't know what that learn page is, you can click here and find out. The next thing um, is registration. Do you wanna make it, do you want people to be able to register for this event? I say yes, you always do. It's a good way to kind of vet the list of registrants before you even start the event to see if there's any spam accounts or any emails that jump out at you that I don't want that person at my event. So you can look through those emails and check and, and, and send them out and share them with other members of your team to make sure that there's no um, malicious accounts or anything in there. So it's a really good thing to do uh, to make sure that it's a safe and it's the right people coming to your event. So registering is good. The event password, you can create your own. It auto generates one that's very secure. And then you have, um, your program so you can actually create an entire program that goes along with this event we're not going to do that but it's very intuitive and you can put in JPEG files and different things like that um, and create custom HTML text it's really really great the next thing you can do is select and set up the date and time that's pretty straightforward the one thing I will mention about this is the time zone that is key sometimes if your account, uh, your WebEx site account is set to a certain time zone, it might not take effect in the event. It might be a different one. So make sure that your time zone is set to the correct time zone of where you are in the world or where you want your event to be hosted. That is key. Um, you don't want someone getting a random time to be a, 
the, where the meeting started when it didn't because they were across the world in a different spot. You want them to get the right time for the meeting start. So making sure your time zone is correct is very, very key. You can also set up an event reminder um, 50 to 10 minutes before, which is really helpful as well. It sends them an email, any, any people who have registered, it sends them an automatic email uh, to make sure that they get invited. Is the audio conference setting. So this is for if someone wants to call in and they aren't in front of a computer, they just wanna use their phone. You can put in the global call in numbers and you can make sure that when they call, it mutes them so they're not, you know, if they're driving and, or they're walking down downtown, you don't hear um, when they join the meeting, the hustle and bustle of traffic going by through their phone speaker and it just disturbs the entire event. Um, that setting is great to have. And then in your description, you can put anything and that shows up in all emails, anything that goes out to all of your attendees or panelists, it goes out to them. This is the event description. This is what it looks like. Um, and you can put a picture in there. You can put um, uh, a picture of yourself or the host of the meeting. So maybe if that's a company logo, you can put the company logo there. Um, the event picture is actually, uh, the, the picture about the event description is a really good put, spot to put a logo because it, it puts a banner kind of logo across the entire email that gets sent out. So that's what I would suggest. That's what I've done and, had and found success with in the past. It's a really good uh, uh, feature for your emails. Is um, we don't need to worry about rich media players or files or different things like that. Um, this is for if you want attendees to be able to share files back and forth. We really don't want them. Um, so we can just uncheck that box. I've unchecked it. I've had no problems with that. This is a really, uh, key setting here as well. Who can view the attendee list? We don't want to send out a list of a whole bunch of people's emails and contact information and addresses to all participants, especially if we are just letting any registrants through. We don't want to do that. We don't want everyone to be able to see everything. So we just want the hosts, the host presenter and panelists to be able to see that information. Um, it's a good way to send out a mailing list after the event but we just wanna keep that on that setting. You can create post-event surveys. You can also put in a destination URL after the event. So it it's, will take you to a website um, after the event has been ended. Now, for attendees and registration, you can create an invitation list. So if you already have an email list from a whole bunch of people, you can load that in. Um, you can load it in with a CSV file, which is really, really great. It's a super uh, intuitive uh, part of WebEx events. Very, very helpful. This is a, another key checkbox that you wanna look at and make sure you don't miss, is allowing registrants to invite friends to this event. So if they've registered for the event, you've approved them, they have the option in the email to then invite their friends. I've usually unchecked this box because I don't want attendees to, be, to have that control. I really just want our, in, our email list to go out to those specific people and those specific people are invited to the event. If they want to send their friend to the registration link, that's fine. They can share that. That's no big deal. But we don't want them to be able to just immediately invite their friends, unless that's what you want. There's lots of options. You can customize your registration form. You can send them to a destination after they've registered. So if there's a specific piece of content or website that you want your uh, attendees and your registrants to look at after they've registered, you can send them there. It's really, really great. So you can also set up approval rules. This gets pretty in depth. I'm not gonna go all the way in depth about this, but if you open up uh, this venue, it's very, very intuitive. Now, similar to the attendees, you have a panelist invite. You, you can have a whole bunch of panelists um, and you can invite them with a separate link. So they'll get a separate email link. You just wanna make sure that they don't share that information with anyone else. You wanna make sure that that's in a private email um, so that no one else can click and just become a panelist and have control over the entire event. That would not be good. And then right at the bottom, you have email messages. So you can um, create different email messages that go out at different times. You can schedule them to go out. 
it's a really great um, way to keep people engaged before you before your event starts. It's all automated. You don't have to worry about it. You just set the settings, let it go, and your uh, your attendance might grow for the event if it's uh, and you may you'll you'll make sure that everyone shows up and everyone shows up on time and knowing the information that they need to know for the uh, for the webinar. So it's really great. All you have to do now is schedule the event. Um, so I'm just going to hit schedule the event. And what does it say? The event start time should not be before the current time. So all I have to do is just switch this to tomorrow. And then we'll hit schedule this event. And now it asks, do you want to send all these invitation emails out? You don't have to send them right now. You can send them later. So I'm going to say send later. And this is what it gives you. So it gives you all the information. Your actually any pictures or host pictures that you have would show up in this. You would see a lot of great uh, detail. This is basically what your attendees would get. Um, they would get all these different uh, details here that you're seeing. Um, and at the bottom here, you can edit your event. You can change all the settings, description, anything that you want. And you can hit update this event. You don't have to send these updates. The same link will work. This was a little bit scary for me when I was doing my first event with the WebEx um, events platform. If you update settings, it won't change the link that you've already sent out. So those attendees that have registered under that link that's already been sent, that link won't change. So you're good. Everyone will be able to still join your event even if you make changes. Again, we'll hit send later. And then you can also click manage registrations and you can see who's been approved, who's pending. If you actually had a registrant show up in here, you could reject them, you could deny them entry into the, um, into the webinar before they've even joined the meeting. So it's really, really great. Um, if you record the event, your event recordings show up here. We've done a couple of recordings so you can see that they've, uh, they've shown up already and you can download them, you can email them, you can share them, you can edit your email templates. Really, you know, really great stuff. It's just kind of, for me, it's just kind of hidden. You wouldn't really think to, to look. You'd look in probably these menus before you jump down here. This video has been on creating a WebEx event, the basics of creating a WebEx event. So if you would like more in-depth information, we can do a video on that in the future. But for now, if you like what we're doing, you can hit the subscribe button here. If you'd like to watch more videos about WebEx, you can click over here. And if you'd like to watch more videos about solving technology and all things like that, you can click over here. Thanks for watching.